Today's video is sponsored by Wayfair. Today I am giving over a full house makeover to a Lone Fox family member. We're the Sansa family. We actually moved into our home this year in April. Hello. Hey Drew, how are you? I'm good, I'm just getting a haircut. Unfortunately I have some bad news. Found asbestos in the ceiling. Okay. Which means you're going to have to push everything back a few weeks. A few weeks? This is so exciting. It's raining outside at the moment, you guys. Day one of the Sons of Family install and it's pouring rain in Los Angeles of all days. Never rains here. But I have not been able to see these ceilings yet. We had them completely scraped of the popcorn, which had asbestos in it, by the way. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are waiting to know what happened. And let me give you the quick rundown of everything that occurred. So we actually did an at-home test kit for the asbestos and it came back negative. I don't know if we just tested the wrong spot or what happened with that. And the Sonza family actually brought out a professional to test the asbestos. And a day before the ceiling scraping was going to happen, the asbestos results came back as positive. And when that occurred, you have to hire an abatement team, which they actually have to notify the city two weeks prior to scraping that they're going to be scraping. So it just delayed everything, pushed everything back, and the family was actually already in the place they were staying while I was doing the makeover. So it was just a big mind boggle if that makes sense and then once the ceilings were actually scraped they were damaged pretty badly looking something like this and they were not paintable the painters actually walked in and sent me this video and they were not paintable so i had to get them mudded and painted before i walked in on this day right here but we had them scraped and it was kind of a hazard zone for a bit and then they were painted by the painters and this is my first time seeing this space it is, I mean, it's dark in here and it still feels light and bright, which is crazy. The ceiling in here looks freaking amazing. The old popcorn was so scary. And then I had all the walls painted in here white. I figured you guys didn't want to watch me paint the walls white. So this is Sherwin-Williams Alabaster, which I saw Jen had plastered in sample form all over all her walls. So I just decided to go with that option for white paint. I know she likes light and bright, but the first thing I'm actually wanting to do in here today is work on the window trim because currently it's like this silver, metal and the furniture from Wayfair is being delivered in about two hours and I want to get these painted so we have somewhere to put all the furniture. So I'm going to start today by taping off these windows. We're going to spray paint them white and get this living room kind of all painted and then get the furniture in and start designing. <laughs> Windows are all prepped and I'm going to be spraying these same as I did the windows in my own house. So I'm actually gonna be using an automobile primer. I find this a lot easier. It etches into the metal. It also resists high heat, which is great. And then I'm just gonna be using a satin white spray paint over top to just make these windows kind of flow into the rest of the space. And our sliding glass door is already white, which is great. So these are gonna then match when we're done with them. Okay, I have been waiting for this to dry for about a little over an hour and it's just super tacky. I think it's because it's cold outside, it's a little rainy or a lot rainy. And I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this so we can work on some other stuff. Actually, everything's gonna be going in one room because rooms are still being painted. So you guys are just kind of loading it all into one space. Right. <laughs> My one rug. 
I don't want to give like, them exactly what they wanted. Like, I want it to be like a space that people are like, oh my gosh, this is cool. Like, well, also to honor different. the mid century vibe yeah. at home. Mm -hmm. It has to honor their style, your style. I think it's going to be like a good mix. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> That's for in here too. That's such a pretty chair. Oh, look at that side table. This is fun, it's like Christmas. <laughs> so we get to keep none of this. I know, yeah. none of it's fine. <laughs> I'm planning on putting these two chairs here facing this way. And then these two chairs, since they were smaller profile, I was gonna put on the rug facing this way. Yeah. This is so pretty. It's like braided too. Like, do you see how the pieces are braided? Oh, <gasps> so soft. I think I want a rocking chair. I love this chair world that we have here. Welcome to my chair land. This is a room of chairs, the other one's a room of rugs. When I was thinking about the floor plan and designing this space, I knew I wanted to utilize a bunch of our floor space because previously they just had a couch on the back wall. I wanted to add a rug and then the sofa on that back wall as well. In the far back, I'm wanting to add some curtain panels on those windows and then a couple of accent chairs on top of the rug as well, just to provide ample amount of seating. In the center of that, we're gonna be doing a coffee table and on that back wall, a large piece of DIY artwork. Is it? Oh, is that like, like Goldilocks trying to get the right chair? No, oh, the right yeah, porridge. Oh. Well, no, but she does chairs too. I yeah, think, she right? tries the really? chairs. Doesn't no, she? No, she just. Uh, I thought it was like too hot, too cold. Yeah, but then just the chairs right were like right? too hard, too soft, just right. I didn't read that one, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, then the beds. She did the beds too, and remember, and the moth and the bears come home, and she's sleeping in the bed. This is nice. I the bed. I remember the bed. And the chairs. I don't think there was chairs. I think it was the bed. It was the bed and the porridge. There was no chairs. Unless there's one in the box, I don't. But I don't think so. I don't remember seeing one. Oh, in the what list. the heck? Um, let me go. I'm gonna go check really yeah. quick. One sec. We're couchless. We're couchless. We have no couch. <laughs> Marie, could you pull up the order form if you could? There's no couch here. Yeah, look, there it is. Hampton sofa delivered. It looked like this. I mean, it's possible that they didn't get processed in time. It might still be in the warehouse. Uh, I don't know if you wanted me or if you wanted to call our office. Um, maybe they could track it down for you if it's still in our warehouse. Oh, I called him. He's looking into it. Oh, okay. But he'll call me back, he said. But... Cool. Oh, thank you. I've been paid for this. <laughs> I got my receipt and I didn't even pay. <laughs> Okay, we are going to be placing a rug in the living room space. Oh, and guys, by the way, my dad is here. He is visiting. Well, not visiting. I actually asked if he'd come help me with the project and he said, yes, I'll come visit you. I said, okay. And so he's here helping. We also have my friend Justin helping and Marie's helping out too. So this is actually the rug that I decided on for the living room, however, I do have a nursery rug and an additional rug that's going to be in the primary bedroom. I might also want to test those out just to see if they can swap around because they're pretty neutral. I love Wayfair's rug selection. They always have the best. And this is a new Chris Loves Julia Laloy rug and it's so cute. I'm thinking about this one for the nursery though, so I'm not a thousand percent sure. This one looks so pretty in here too. Wow, well now I don't even know. I like them both. Okay, one more. And this is our last option. Oh, this one's so pretty too. Wow. This one almost looks like a mohair rug. It looks extremely expensive, honestly, but it's just printed like that or woven like that. I don't know which one. Texture, pattern, or luxury? Hmm. Okay, I think I'm gonna be taking Julia's nursery rug and putting it in the living room because I kind of think it's pretty. I like the pattern in here and it's the most contrasting with the floor because I feel like the one I actually ordered for the floor is pretty tone on tone. Pulling this one off because we're not using it.
At least can bring in some of the chairs and maybe the coffee table to get some furniture placement in this living room. Okay, so I can picture the couch being right approximately here-ish. I am the couch at the moment, and I'm going to bring in some of the side chairs that I got. These side chairs, honestly, look at the shape of this chair. How cool is this? When you sit in it, you feel like spring. But I'm thinking of putting these as accent chairs over on this side of the rug. This is the coffee table that I selected for this space. I thought it was so cool and I loved how the legs kind of resembled little trophies. It looks like a little trophy. The shape was just something I hadn't seen before and I thought it would be really nice. Wanted to add a pop of color to our seating, so I found these velvet chairs that kind of have an amber tone to them. And they're pretty small profile, so I was gonna put them on this side of the rug. Remember, I am the couch. And then this chair right here, Jerome and Jen mentioned that they host a lot, they have family over all the time, so I wanted to make sure they had a ton of seating in this room. We have a little side table, probably pop right there. And guys, I don't want you to think that I just whipped this out of nowhere. I spent so much time pre-designing this space, but it was so much fun. I absolutely loved it. Just pairing everything together, creating a mood board for it. And I have this little martini table as well, which I'm going to put actually in the middle of these chairs. And then maybe I'll actually pop this over on this side for now. I'm actually gonna put this little table right here. There we go. And then on this back wall, I'm actually doing a really, really large mural. I found an eight by eight mural that has this really interesting kind of like line work graphic on it that I want to put on this entire wall and frame it out, give it like a mid-century frame. And it's going to be such a focal point in this living room. <laughs> It's really small. I mean, these can go on the rug. Honestly, the circle kind of looks good. I kind of like it. I've also always wanted to put chairs on a rug and I've never got to. Alrighty, so we are actually going to tape off the couch just because we don't have it yet. So we're gonna see size. Oh, and this is Justin. This is Justin. Hi, I'm <laughs> Justin. <laughs> As you guys can see, the sofa's pretty low and I just kept in mind the mid-century quality of this house and selected a low couch uh, just because I thought it would look really nice in this space. It's like a cute size of couch. Mm -hmm. Should we pretend like we're sitting on it? We're yeah. Just... Oh, it's a low couch. She's low. <laughs> she is. But I like it, it's cute, it feels very... Um... Quaint. Yeah, yeah, like you can sit here for hours with mm -hmm. good friends and have like good conversation. Exactly. Let's bring in the mural. Let's do it. So this is a mural that I found on Wayfair, and I want to do a really large piece of artwork above the sofa and just do it long, but we kind of have to figure out what part of the mural we want to include, because I love this little fisherman. Like, I think if we, we should just I'm... chop this, this section off, like just cut this off to start. Okay, so how's that looking? I mean, that it does keep our fisherman in. It does keep him in right at the bottom of the frame. I don't, I think it's kind of cool if the couch covers the bottom a little bit. Do you like that or do you like the I frame? like it, but the frame is kind of thick. They say that if you're rich, the back of your couch doesn't touch the wall. So maybe if we put it forward true. eight inches. Rich. Rich. <laughs> oh yeah, so we can just frame it underneath and pull everything forward a little. Yeah, because we have room to, we have room. if we went eight inches forward, that great. plenty let's of room. Let's just do that. So let's just cut it there. We're gonna cut this down and then see how it fits. Okay, moment of truth. This is also vinyl, which is completely washable. And it also doesn't wrinkle. I was like <laughs> leaning back to put my weight on it. <laughs> I should have warned you. Oh my gosh, I want to look at it. Yeah, let's do. 
It's so cool. It's so cool. It's so cool, I love it. I'm obsessed, it's perfect. And then as far as the frame goes, I picked up these one by threes this morning and I'm gonna be framing it kind of in a mid-century style. So I'm actually gonna frame it to where the wood pops out a little bit and just kind of encases the entire image. Um, mine's overhanging like a quarter inch. Mine's like an eighth of an inch. Let's push it like right there. Does that look good for you? Yeah. Okay, should we put on the top one? <laughs> okay, so Julia cannot break this off, clearly. Do you want to do some over there on your side? Yeah. Maybe. This one will never fall. This maybe, one's stuck. Maybe do a couple just in case. That is the prettiest shot I ever saw, even with the ladder in front of it. 68 and 1 8. Uh, 68 and 3 8. We're only a quarter inch off. I just need to mark them, cut them, miter them, stain them, stick them. You just made it sound like a ton of words. I'm just gonna cut them, mark them, miter them, stain them, um, fix them. I did scrapbooking for years and I am so good with tiny measurements because I did paper cutting, like so much paper. Oh, nice. And it would be like seven and five sixteenths. Yeah. And I'd be like, okay. Okay, oh yeah, just hold it right there. I will not move. Don't even move. I won't breathe. Don't breathe. It look good. Yeah, I think just, see how sturdy this one is? Yeah. Cause it's mounted into the top and bottom. I like to add a hundred. There we go. Let's tape take down. the tape off of the couch. It looks so good. So good. I love it. <laughs> For the breakfast nook, I'm actually adding very minimal pieces, but I'm really being strategic with what I add. I'm going to be adding a circle table to the center along with four dining chairs around that. On those windows, of course, we're gonna be adding some curtains and a new chandelier to this section as well. And to finish it all off, just a couple of decor elements. Believe it or not, everybody, I found this on the street. Me and my dad were driving here and it was in two parts. I jumped out of the car and was like, I think we need this for the breakfast nook. It would be perfect with the chairs that I got from Wayfair for this space. And I'm actually so excited for the chairs. I'm gonna go grab those really quickly and we can put them at the table. I mean, you guys, look at these dining chairs. They're gonna be the little breakfast nook chairs that we're using in this space. But I think they are so cute, so chic. Wayfair has some of the best Furniture. They actually have one of the largest selections of furniture online as well. So if you guys are interested in any furniture for your house at really any price range, you have got to check out Wayfair, especially because right now they're having like a Black Friday or Cyber Monday sale and their sales are absurd. You guys got to take advantage of the promos that they have. I'm going to grab the other chairs. And not to mention their items come so, so fast. I got absolutely everything for this entire house in probably a week and a half, which I think is crazy. It was a pretty quick turnaround for the project, but I knew with Wayfair being the sponsor, you know, we were gonna make it happen. And guys, Wayfair also has so much more than just furniture. They also have home improvement, renovation, and storage. So if you need anything for your house, whether it be, you know, wood slats, um, storage boxes, they have virtually everything for the home. So definitely take advantage of their major Black Friday and Cyber Monday discounts that are going to be happening. This is looking great, but I wanna bring the light in and I also have a vase for this table. I added the little bar piece in the loop. And what I'm gonna do is actually find where I wanna add a little additional hook so we can swag this directly above and then just kind of add the chain over to the actual fixture. And you know what? I'm just gonna like eyeball this. Looks right about there. <laughs> this is how I do all my projects, guys. Like, just do it, you know?
Got it. I picked up this plastic chain at the hardware store. It's just literally plastic chain. It's like 25 cents a foot. And I'm going to be using this with my light because it literally looks exactly the same. I'm gonna use the little clip that it came with to attach it to the base. You're actually able to adjust this however high or however low you'd like the light to be. So I'm gonna hang it here and get a visual for this. Oh, okay. Might be a smidge too low. I kind of feel like that looks good. And then I'm just going to gauge however much I need to swag over, probably about this much, and remove this link. Now from here, we'll probably just see how much cording we need. And then I'm gonna take the cord, weave it up through the chain, and then we can attach it here. Okay, this is a moment of truth. Yay! It actually kind of illuminates a pretty light. I love how it's just this that lights up. That's fun. Okay. So I created a template for the top of the fireplace because it's at an angle and I actually want to apply these really, really cool boards on that I found from Wayfair. This is like renovation supplies, which I was mentioning. These are such cool slatted boards and we're gonna really create a focal point in the living room. And so I'm laying this across and then we're just gonna tape off our top border and cut it on the miter saw so we can get our angle right. Now that we tape these off, we're gonna have the perfect angle cut and we can mount this flush to the ceiling. That's mounted. She's stuck on there. Julia can hang straight off of this. <laughs> I start? I think I can start right here. I really hope that didn't ruin the paint. We are starting on the kitchen this morning and I am so excited about this kitchen because I actually love the wooden cabinetry. So Jen herself was like, you know what? I don't know if I love it, but do you like it? And I was like, I do. I really think we can enhance it, just bring the grain out a bit more. And she was like, you know what? If I see it how you want to do it, that is totally fine. So I think we are going to go ahead and actually stain these. But the first thing I want to do is go ahead and remove the hardware. Now the cabinets themselves, I don't even think they're sealed. Like they're pretty rough, which is great because we can just apply our stain directly on top, but we're gonna start off first by removing all of the hardware. I'm gonna use some golden oak wood filler to just fill these holes um, so it looks a little bit more like actual wood. I always suggest over applying your wood filler too because you can sand away as much as you want, but who wants to do two coats? So go through and fill these. We are going to be transforming this entire kitchen with this one can of product. Now this is called Poly Shades by Minwax and it is basically a stain in poly in one step. So it's a sealer, but it also goes over absolutely anything, even if it has a finish on it. So this one is in the color Espresso and we are going to be applying this over the top using a stain brush. And I'm gonna put on some gloves just to make sure I don't get nice and stained. <gasps> Probably good. And I'm just gonna dip a little bit in. And then we're gonna go and start applying it. You can see it goes on pretty dark, but you can actually 
kind of smooth it out pretty well. Keep brushing back and forth just until it feels quite smooth. And then dip again and just repeat this process. We're gonna be doing this on the entire kitchen just to deepen up the cabinets. I think it's gonna make this kitchen really pop and make the wood look more expensive. With this product, it's really about just going over it like 30 times. Like I just brush, 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 just brush back and forth like 50 times and you're gonna even out that stain and it's really gonna blend with the wood underneath. I honestly kind of like the like the little satin it has. Mm -hmm. It'll go down to way more. I think it's really pretty. Cause you can see like that one over there is not very satiny anymore. Look how big of a difference that is. Like this is a door before, this is our new stain on top. Intense, like it is crazy how I did that in I think five minutes. It's also completely scratch proof as well. I did this on my window trim and I tested it. You cannot get this off the surface, which is great. And you guys, that is a stain on this island and it looks so good. It just kind of gave our wood a little bit more depth, a little bit more richness, and I love the colors. So this is gonna be going around the entire kitchen and then we're gonna do new hardware on top. Dining room, I'm keeping the layout pretty simple, starting off with a large rug to cover a majority of that floor tile and give us a grounding space for our new table along with some new chairs. On that back window, I'm gonna be adding some curtains and to finish off the space, adding a new chandelier above the table. Good morning, guys. We are in the dining room today and I already went ahead, I hung some curtains this morning. I actually did two panels on each side. A little tip just to make your curtains look fuller is to get two sets. I just like the way that that looks. I also rolled out a rug, brought in a tree, and here is the new chandelier for the space, which I love. I love the kind of intricate wire work on it. It's really dainty and simple, but I think it's gonna be perfect for the table, which I'm about to bring in as well. So I think I'm gonna grab that and we can see how it fits in the space. Yeah, probably have to move the rug. Let's just put it center on the rug and then pull the rug. And this dining table is actually expandable, so you can pull it apart and look how handy this is. The leaf's just stored on the inside. Just do a little flip. Oh, we just made our table so much larger. That took one second. So cool. It's so pretty too, I love it. I just found this outside. I think it might be a little too large to use as a bench right here. I believe it's the coffee table base, but I could have converted it. Yeah, it's just, just a bit cramped here. It is cute though, I'm probably gonna keep it. But I am gonna go ahead and place our dining chairs. I picked this dining chair shape. I thought it was a little mid-century, it was simple, and it went back to our dining table. I thought it would pair nicely with some of the more vintage elements that we're adding. As far as the rug in here, I also selected a really low pile. That way if food spills on it or anything, you can clean it off easily, and this is gonna totally disguise any stains. Love the look of three chairs on either side. I feel like it just looks a lot more established in like an actual dining situation. Sometimes when you have chairs on the ends and it's a smaller table, it kind of feels a little apartment-y. So I really wanted to make this look extended and like a gathering space. So this, guys, is an extension of kind of the dining room space. It's actually the backside of the living room fireplace as well. And last night we wallpapered this wall in a really pretty Rifle Paper Co. wallpaper, and I love it. And then here is actually a vanity. And originally I ordered this vanity to actually go in one of the bathrooms, but I have a different design idea. So I'm actually going to remove the top, which we kind of already did. Just gonna pull this off, and I'm definitely gonna save this for a future project. 
And then our new tabletop is actually a piece of wood that was covered in a insane material. You guys are actually gonna see this in the bathroom because it's what I'm using to create the new vanity. It is kind of like a concrete plaster. It's crazy. And so I used some of it and tested it on top of here. And we're gonna use that as the tabletop of our coffee bar. Back in the kitchen and we are going to do kitchen hardware, which is so much fun. These are our cabinets, which look amazing, you guys. I wish you could see them in person because on camera, it's kind of hard to get the actual like look of them. They look so cool. It's definitely uneven staining, but that's kind of the look I was going for in here. I wanted to give them very unique wood cabinets. So for the handles in here, I actually want to do these insane humongous appliance pulls on this cabinet here. And they actually have these cute little back plates, which look like this, just kind of mount it on like that. And then we have smaller ones for the upper cabinets like this. And then some little drawer pulls. So these are all going to be mounted around the kitchen so that we can access all of the cabinets. On day four, I spent the morning just styling up some of the spaces. So I actually added a round rug to the corner of the living room to create a little baby corner like Julia had before, a little poof there as well. took the opportunity this morning to style up some of the spaces. I was actually going to do this more so towards the end and do it like all in one day, but I actually wanted to just see some of the items in the space to just make sure the direction was going in the right direction. And oh my gosh, just seeing some of this decor in the living room, you guys, I cannot wait to share it with you. And that round table wasn't the only thing I found on the side of the street. I actually also found this mirror, believe it or not. I think it is so, so pretty. It's like a carved dark walnut mirror and the wood tone just paired perfectly with the table that I was going to be adding underneath it and the slats that we did on the fireplace as well. kitchen, I wanted to play up the almost slight Spanish style this kitchen now has, which I love. I feel like it just adds a nice little personality to the space. And with the additional accents that I'm adding, I'm adding a lot of copper and wood, just warm natural elements that are really going to enhance what we've already added to the space. styling up the kitchen and the dining room, I actually ended up working my way into the bedrooms and bathrooms to start making those over for episode three. Thanks so much to Wayfair for sponsoring this video.